Um, my name is Jason Gaithan Hardy. I run something called the Old Valley Food Adventures based in Great Glenham in East Suffolk. Something I started about three years ago, which is a, it's a rolling celebration of food, arts, farming, and landscape. Seeing, seeing these as key assets in Suffolk. So it's primarily food produced in Suffolk, or only food produced in Suffolk? Uh, yeah, food from the Suffolk landscape. And also, what's interesting about coming here today is seeing the difference between sort of local foods, information technology and renewables to all set in our beautiful Suffolk landscape. Yeah, well I think they're very complimentary, aren't they? Yeah, I think Suffolk's very blessed with all of those. Mm -hmm. It'd be really interesting seeing how we can weave them together into it. I guess the hope is for a lot of people coming here today into kind of a, a Suffolk way of doing things. Mm -hmm. kind of slightly new economics. So how do you market your... Uh do you sell the food, do you procure the for you to you? How do you? I work with some venues up and down the Old Valley mm -hmm. and we ideally source all our food from within about 10 miles, ideally from producers within the, within the valley. And then depending on where we're working, uh, we sort of bring in musicians or artists okay. or we have wild food walks. So it's for one-off events or for restaurants? Uh, for... It's, each event is very individual. It's okay. very much tailored or rooted in the venue and the landscape. But it's also a rolling programme of events, so we're up to about 15 or so. Mm -hmm. So who funds that then? Uh, they're self-funding. Okay. They're designed to be uh, profit-making. Yeah. No, that's great. And uh, have you learnt anything by coming here today? Yes, I think just to make it real. And Michael Meech started the day by saying, uh, with the question, are we ready? And I think for a lot of people here, it's like we're very much ready and wanting to really get going and meet up with other people and just sort of take things on, take things forward. And how, what do you think would help us most to achieve that? Because I think there is a lot of passion here. Yeah. yeah. I think the most important thing would be something which came up in one of their workshops was language, mm -hmm. communication, uh, and using, having a sort of common language. And something which would be very useful, I think, is a set of sustainability criteria. So it's basically like a yardstick or tools, so we all know what sustainability means. Mm -hmm. And it's something which we can apply to any decision-making process. So a sustainability roadmap for Suffolk, so we can all compare. Yeah, or like a sort of tick list. Yeah. What do we want to generate? Local employment, ecological gain, sort of local ownership of things. If we've got that tick list, whether we're working in transport, food, renewables, information mm. technology, we can... I think reasons why list. that doesn't happen is because people get stuck on contentious uh, issues like with the energy debate that we just had. Yeah. I don't think it shouldn't be contentious. I think it's just um, looking at, and again, if we're talking about sustainable development, it's how you bring the benefits of resources or assets we have, be they landscape or local foods, and bring those back to people, provide ownership, provide access, and really celebrate them. And I think the only, if, uh, the contention in the energy debate, I'd say, is simply, Personally, I think some modes of energy resource use don't deliver those things. They, mm -hmm. are, they fall short. And I think wind farms don't do that. They, they can in some places, but generally they're target-led and developer-led. They're not community-based. They're not rooted in the, the local area. So how would you like to see the UK energy supply? You know, if you had the possibility to do it, how would you create it? I think strategic. Mm -hmm. and designed using a mix of energies and a mix of developmental models and those adapted to setting and also to community preferences and needs so that you bring the gain of resource use back to communities and that's adapted according to resource availability and local, local desires. You'd like to bring it local again? Yeah, and in Suffolk we've got fantastic offshore wind, we've got great biomass potential, we've got onshore wind, but we've got a very sensitive rural landscape and a lot of, a lot of people living in the land too. So, well, let's find a windshore policy which grows out of that setting and not something which is parachuted from above. Okay, thanks very much.